Well, hello my friends. Now for Taro, the Rebel Turner. And I'm back due to popular demand, I guess. So, this uh, is not going to be exactly what I thought I wanted it to be. And I'll tell you what I thought I wanted it to be. I thought I wanted it to, to be a hollow vessel maintaining some of these high wings and hollow up on the inside and possibly maintaining some of its integrity uh, as to what I wanted it to be. But sometimes our plans are modified or changed based on what we got. getting it as close as I can this point is just about hitting my uh, tool post so I can't possibly get in there any closer than that and same tool seems to be working fine so I'm gonna go in there with the uh, Carmen Sun 5.8 bowl gouge it's a little bit longer than my uh, as you can see than my hurricane so therefore it gives me that much more reach in there and I am not gonna be putting my hands anywhere near this tool rest I'm gonna be holding my tool all the way back there balance very slanted with my bevel almost sideways so I don't get a nasty catch and lose control and uh, uh, cut way too much so a little bit is better than a lot and losing control. Be careful going in and be careful coming out. And that rattle will always be there because I'm so far, I have such a far reach.
by around carbide cutter. Very aggressive. It's on the handle from my uh, cutter and sun. Nice and easy. Same rule. Not much of an up angle on this. It's a very aggressive cutter. Uh, well, had a catch, number one, distraction on the pull-out, did not break the piece, but the tenon kind of uh, had a little bit of a mishap on this. So I think I can still grip it on the same setup without modifying, and if not, this is where we figure out what we can do to make something work. So I'd be able to create a tenon if push came to shove. So it's still together. But I was saying, this cutter, I don't know what make or what brand it is. It was a gift from my good friend, Wagga Parra came all the way from uh, UK I believe uh, heck of a nice guy say hello to him on his comments and uh, you might need might want to contact him about making you some special tools the the tool post the grind everything was made by him a hell of a nice guy and does awesome workmanship as a matter of fact you ought to see some of his turnings just amazing on what he does so anyway I'm gonna go in there with the same rule as I was applying my bow gouge and on an angle about 45 degrees to the work and uh, careful as not to hit anything Again, pulling it out, make sure that either stop it or, you know, make sure that you are careful when coming out of this. This really is waiting for you to do something just slightly off and it will bite you. Got a little bit more. I'm going to leave this whole bottom a little bit on the thicker side, as I said, because I don't want to come through here. So all I want to do is now eliminate that hole that I still got on the bottom, feather that out, and that will be good to go. Don't get so distracted on the inside that you're forgetting these wings. You're way out here. So don't go with your hand anywhere in there. Keep it out away from danger.
little bit of room there but very little here before I come through so rather than come through I'm gonna leave it like that just gonna feather that up a little bit the very top a little bit slim it down and give it the thickness is towards the bottom like a flame the flame is thin off the top so maybe hit them out Easy. Since I got a good reach with this, I want to use my uh bull gouge to uh, feather that a little bit. It's looking good so that means I gotta go and take off a little bit from this middle yet which will catch to this so not much at the top all I dare take out of this and the rest being fat wood which is a fire starter wood and it looking like a flame is pretty much everything that I thought I could possibly get out of this as I said before you really can't sand this wood uh, so if you got anything that needs a little bit and it's stopped, you can get it a little a couple of lines out of it This really is Nice time to uh, Put my stick in there just a little bit just get some of this out while it's running 
Hopefully. That's it. I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. And applying some dust dry polyurethane. Want to keep this just a natural look. Can't buff it. If I could buff it, which is my choice of finish, that's what I would do. But seeing that. Uh, I got all these crevices and these wings, it's impossible to uh, really hand buff this. So, apply your retain or lack of finish, and uh, that will give you a nice finish that will last a long time. Now, next week. If I get out here, it depends on how well I do with this, or how I feel. Um, I want to create something that will be, I don't know who, if anybody else has done it or not, uh, it's not going to be something wow, but uh, a fan of mine, one of you guys, is a big Star Trek fan. And so was I, but he's, he and she, uh, it's, Ah, way beyond my uh, fan ah, what I consider myself to be a fan I don't know the characters names uh, I'm bad with names to start off with but I know, you know a couple of characters uh, uh, and I used to watch it faithfully I should know them all but I don't so uh, the wife Alan Jaeger uh, kind of been after me to get turning on something and for inspiration suggested that maybe I turn some Star Trek uh, characters or do stuff in the name of some of the uh, wood turners that I follow or whatever just inspiration thing well with that I decide. Well, I'm not going to be able. To, I'm not going to be making characters of people or Star Trek characters for that matter. But uh, my intent is to make the SS Enterprise, and I'll make it out of multiple woods and see how that goes. So you guys will have something to look forward to for after the holidays, and that will be done in. In sessions so I'm not going to do one turning fast forward through everything and voila it's done good luck on making yours I will do each part of the body and focus that as one section or at least a partial of something uh, that completes the whole project and it will be done in three uh, you know two or three uh, videos so you guys get to know what I did because it will involve a lot of pieces it will involve me doing multiple turnings and to get to the point of completion
Well, here's the bowl in flame. I guess I can call it that. It's a pretty piece. All right, the camera would have helped if it was focused in there. But love the flaming red inside of it. Love the charred, aged, natural character that uh, Mother Nature has helped under the design. And love the fact that this goes up into what looks like a flame. You agree, you can say so, but uh, don't have to agree. So right now I'm just gonna let this dry for a little while come back uh, get rid of all anything that doesn't belong here I got some white stuff in there that was uh, probably in just stuff embedded into the wood and the polyurethane is pop making it pop up so so that's what it is Be back in a bit. Well, it's still tacky, but uh, I'm gonna remove it, turn it around, and uh, get off that base so I can get inside and edit this and post it up. I'm anxious because it's been a while since I've posted anything. And I know many of you have been waiting for me to come up with my next turning.
Well, I gotta say, I'm excited about this one. Uh, it really worked to what I wanted to present. I wanted to present something that looked like seeing that the wood and Mother Nature had worked so hard on making, giving me a foundation to go by and maintaining this beautiful swirl work done by Mother Nature. Couldn't be dupl duplicated in any other way. It being fat wood, which is a fire starter, used quite commonly. You can buy little slivers of this actually to start fires. It's sold commercially for that. I figured that what would be more appropriate to make it look like something that was on fire. And the the way that the pattern goes and blowing over, it really does represent that. So with that, I'm going to be calling Bowl of Fire. Even though I am sure that there could be a name that I could name it that would be more of a clickbait. Like Mother Nature messed it up. I fixed it. <laughs> I never look at it that way. It's a bowl of fire. Hope you like it. And we'll see you on the next one. Uh, next one might be the Starship. The uh, USS Enterprise. Or it might be this other half that's over here. Which again, will create something nice. And I still have this sliver over here. Which was the tail. Which will give me couple of finials or something like that to enhance some other piece but I think this one will work out really nice too so uh, I don't know it depends see I'm not the type of person who likes to plan and say uh, I'm gonna do this or I'm not or I'm not gonna do that for the simple reason that as soon as I do that it becomes like a job and out here at any time or at least when I do come out here that I have to do something because you know you guys expect me to or something like that I somewhat lose interest because I have to love what I'm doing for me to do it rather than I must do it I don't like the must do it so we'll see what happens next time don't forget give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends that is the only way that it helps me a great deal is by you watching, commenting, and linking it to Facebook. Link it to your other friends out there. Let them know what an amazing piece this turned out to be. And yes, I'm going to say this one is an amazing piece. In case you don't. <laughs> well, also, with this, Merry Christmas, guys. And ladies and may you have a wonderful Christmas and may Santa be looking over your area and bring you all that you want or that you need distinguish those two because some of the things that we want are not necessarily things that we need so hopefully the needs get filled before the wants <laughs> take care we'll see you again